Yeah. Uh, good evening, and a and welcome to BFA's On The Ball show. We've been away for a couple of weeks, but we're back as usual. Uh, this is the uh, new layout now. We are uh, on uh, on live in the studio every the first two weeks of every month. So hopefully you'll tune in, and we're here next week as well. And as ever, we're here to talk all things BFA. We've got a number of activities that are going on and things to catch up on. Uh, the key focus, as usual, over the winter period is going to be CFL and um, all things winter football. We're also going to talk a, f a bit about Sporting Bengal Academy. We're going to talk about Town Hamlets Youth League um, and a few of the projects that are going on. Uh, with the uh, BFA UK organization. So without any further ado, uh, ado let's uh, get cracking with the show. Um, I've got some familiar faces um, to my left who are going to be talking about CFL. They've had a good result today and really, really pushing on in the league as well. Let's introduce the familiar gentleman first to my left. We have Reggie from Ottertunus. How you doing, mate? You all right? Thank you. Very good. How good to you? have you on the show. It's nice to yeah. On the show, you're on the phone every week, aren't you? So <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, yeah you, you're one of our one reg of regular three. pundits. That's all good. Um, and also, we have Endrit from um, Otto Tunas. First time you've been on the show, so we're yeah. gonna, we'll be talking more to you and we'll to get a bit bit of insight from no Reggie and all. see what your role is in <laughs> a bit. And, um, and like I said, we do like to mix it up here at BFA's on the ball show. We've also got a special treat for all you guys out there watching tonight. We've got um, a young gentleman uh, by the name of Nasir Ud. Um, where we like to introduce new people, player, players, not just players, um, but people from the football industry that are doing s great things, and um, particularly from our community. And Nasir is um, a young gentleman who's who's um, started his career uh, at, at university and, got, and is now moving into the sports world and um, has found a massive opportunity for himself. And he's going to share with you his journey. Uh, as to how uh, how we got there. Um, so I'm going to introduce Nasiruddin um, to my right. Snalakum Nasir, how are you doing? Uh, not too bad, thanks. Thanks for coming on the show. Nasir, you are a uh, strength and conditioning intern at Crystal Palace. Yep, that's right. Right, so uh, we'll come to you shortly. We'll yep. learn more a bit more. We've got you through the show uh, so you can share with us how you got to where you did and, and uh, a bit of your experiences. And hopefully for the kids that are watching out there as well, um, something other than just playing football, we can show you opportunities um, that are out there that you can get involved in football. It's something that we're constantly talking to you guys about. Other than football, there are many of the opportunities that you can use and use the path pathway um, in your journey in sports if that's what you want to do. And that's just a prime example of that. So, Reggie, let's start with you. Uh, so, you've had a good day today. Oh, awfully, yes. Yeah. So, t listen, we we're, we're we're more than halfway through the CFL season now. Yes. Uh, first of all, tell us how you got on today. What was the score? To be honest with you, uh, today it was a good performance. Uh, first of all, it was a good turn on. Um, every week, week in, week out, all the guys, they are turning, they are ready for this competition. And they do it so well. But um, I'm, I'm looking forward, you know, for these kind of uh, big games, mm. semi-finals and stuff. So, and I encourage them to be focused in the games week in, week out, and when everything comes. Yeah, excellent. Okay, well, well like I say, you're, what you're, uh, we'll talk more about the league table and the results, but, y you know, it's, it, the, uh, today was a massive day. Uh, I think the, we'll, we'll talk about the results shortly, but there was an upset today, which means kind of gives you that glimmer of hope. Um, we'll talk more about that in the second half. Uh, but let me talk to Indrit. Now, uh, Indrit, it's the first time you've been on the show. Yeah. Tell people a bit about what you're doing, what's your role at Ottertunas. My role is basically what I take on the training, on the training ground. We train once a week on the Thursday night. And obviously with my colleague Reggie, got to prepare for the Sunday game to select the, the squad because we've got a big squad at the moment. So so how many people do you get to train on a, on a Thursday? Uh, usually it's, it's more than 15. Okay. The less they've been, it's just the, going through the cold weather at the moment. It's been 12, 13, but for the rest of... We were talking off air, the types of players that you get, some, some of them play, they play Saturday level, so they're playing at a senior level, right? Six yes. of them. Six of them? Yes, okay. they, they do play. Myself with six of them. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so they're telling Reggie. They, they play on Saturdays as well sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> when we've got a big game, we've got to prepare and obviously rest and tell them you've got to lay off on the Saturday or... Yeah. So what's their priority, your guys at 
that, that play on a Saturday, is their priority out of Tunis or is their priority the team on a Saturday? No. Because you just told them not the, to play on a Saturday. Yeah, I've game. already told them and some of them, they, 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 don't, they don't play. Okay. So we've got one or two players which they, they like to just, you know, play football and be active. They don't work on Saturday, so they just go and play. So and when they come on Sunday, we, we, we start as a sub. Because okay. obviously playing a full game and you turn up on a Sunday, still you're never going to perform as good as what you would when you start one one game a week. Okay. So. And how long have you been involved in this club now? From the start? Yeah, from the start we've, we've been. So well, I know we've talked about it before, but in terms of your funding and uh, Reggie's mentioned it, uh, how are you one of the one of the members that are actively involved in finding money and? Uh, yes. Right. It's my yeah. It's a uh, it's my sponsor. More or less. Okay. In so, you should, and so you're one of the sponsors, uh, uh, right? I'm sponsoring. Yeah. So what, what's what's the name of your? What do you do? What's your name of your organisation? It's London Luffs. It's a Luff company which I've been running with my brothers for over ten years now. Okay. More. Yeah. Based in East London. East London. Yeah. Okay. East London Luffs. They call the company. The okay. Company. Oh, there you go. You just got. Give yourself a little plug, mate. You're sponsoring. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't miss them opportunities. <laughs> yeah. I need a loft conversion. I need a loft conversion. And, and, and I need. I need to tell something for East London Luffs. I want to uh, to big cheer um, uh, his big brother, uh -huh. uh, Kreshnik. Okay. He's running this company for at least uh, more than 15 years, I think. Uh -huh. And after. Uh, the younger brother, Oli. So there you go. You've done it. Yeah. All right. Well Thank done, guys. And like I say, I think it's yeah. important. Like organisations like yourself in the community, we, we talk about it a lot here on the show. It's, they're vital to clubs like Autotunis and all the other clubs that are out there. Uh, we'll play winter. We'll play summer league. So all the businesses, if you're out there in your local community, make sure you get behind these people and clubs like these because they need all the support they can get. All right, guys. We're going to talk about CFL more in the second segment. Let's focus sure. more now on uh, Nasser and and what he's doing. Uh, Nasser, we're going to come to you now, obviously, from your... Let's start at the very beginning. You, you know, you're, you're, you've you finished your A-levels yep. and you choose a course. Now, your course, we were chatting on the way here, that is, yep. is very different. Yep. Uh, for those that aren't, uh, that are watching and the young, aspiring uh, sports people uh, from our community and, and beyond, what, what course did you enrol on and why did you choose that? Okay. Um, so the degree itself is it's called a Strength and Conditioning Science BSc. Um, and the aim is what, what we try to do, or what the, the course is trying to do is merge the world of athletic performance and scientific research. So we, we have sports science where we look at aspects of psychology, nutrition, um, performance in general. There's sports sociology, just understanding the, the game. But Strength and Conditioning focuses purely on the athletic performance. So if you're looking at a sprinter who needs to get 0.01 seconds faster by the end of a certain race, that is what our job as a strength and conditioning specialist would be um, to do because it's the, the fine tuning of speed, power, um, you know, the, the aspects of where the, where the knee is going, where the toes are going during the me mechanical analysis of, of the body. These are all things that we break down and try to improve. Um, so it's it's a, a breakdown of specialisms where the nutritionist purely deals with the nutrition. Mm -hmm. The psychologist, the analysis of the game is dealt with by the psychologists and the performance analysis. So whereas us lot would come in and say, OK, you know what? We think that we can fix speed by improving power production in the gym and then taking you back out onto the track again. OK. Yeah. Um, now, is this something that you, you, you chose before? You, this is the route that you, you, you decided or is it something that you just came across? How did it work? Um, so, I mean, I, I started off with biology, um, be, being an Asian, especially being Bengali. <laughs> um, it was just like biology, maths, chemistry. That, those really, are, yeah, those yeah. are the typical yeah, subjects, yeah. right? Um, I was a bit, I was a bit um, disappointed by biology because I, I thought I'd be learning about the human body, <laughs> but uh, they took us out and we were like studying grasses. Yeah. And, uh, we were looking Botany, at, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. So we were like, oh, look yeah. at that dandelion there. How amazing is that? And I was like, nah, nah, that's, that's not it. Um, coincidentally, we had a Centre of Applied Science building, which was a, one of the campuses related to the college. I uh, don't know if you've ever watched Batman, but Centre of Applied Sciences just sounded a little fleshy, right? You yeah. thought you'd get a Batmobile in there or something. So um, we headed into there, they had this thing called sports science, and it's purely human biology and then some other stuff that... I this, was at, this was at A-level? Um, yeah, so it was worth three A-levels. So wow. it's, um, it's an extended diploma. So 
So what I did is I, I transferred from my first year of um, A-levels into, into this course and I spent another two years basically getting three A-levels worth in um, topics like anatomy, physiology, um, sports psychology, research methods. So I finished off, ended up doing three years, but came out with the equivalent of three to four A-levels mm -hmm. and then moved straight into um, university. But for doing well at that level with um, sports science, I managed to get an academic scholarship as well. So it okay. worked out pretty well for me. Oh, good yeah. man, good man. So now, you, now you're currently studying uh, Sports and uh, sorry, strength and conditioning. Where um, at Saint Mary's University in Twickenham, which currently is the only university that does that degree at a bachelor's level. Okay. Yeah. And and through that, you've now this is where the role with Crystal Palace comes about, right? You're you're yeah. an intern at Crystal Palace, and yep. you're working with the uh, with the main team yep. on on with players and and the academy level i'm guessing so just tell people how you got into that yeah so um like so part of being at, uh, at a university like saint mary's um they have a lot of good links with good teams professional athletes um mo farrah for example used to study at saint mary's university so we, our track is basically named after him we have a scholarship foundation based after him as well um so we have lecturers who are well hooked up with different sports and different research specialisms you know some of them are specialists in hormonal research in rugby players you know some of them are specialists in just genetics within concussion within combat mm. sports so it gets to really deep levels so um one of them in particular he has a link with watford crystal palace um and wasps so he happened to basically get me in uh wasps in the first year when i when i applied for them and um this uh this year was with crystal palace as a sports scientist or strength and conditioning intern so our roles are we get into the academy we interview with the academy lead strength and conditioning coach or the sports science and medicine um, head of department and then what we do is we get assigned to particular age groups and our role is to um, um monitor like training load so every 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 end of session you look at the kind of um the perceived exertion so they will say at 10 out of 10 out of 10 or you know out of 10 i felt like today's session was six maybe you you multiply that by the um the amount of minutes they've trained for example and then you create a load and on an excel spreadsheet we, we calculate the load over the week we look at the total minutes played and then we also look at things like injury history mm. and then we kind of like concoct a, a profile for each player and where we see things are going wrong, where we see they're slacking. You know, for some of them it may be speed on the ball, for some of them it may be change of direction ability. So what age group does this all this start? Um, so academy strength and conditioning, like the, the service will probably begin from under nines. Uh, under nines? Under nines, okay. yeah. And it will work up to under 16s. Different clubs will have different ethoses. So, uh, Fulham, for example, will get their guys from 12 onwards to start weight training, mm -hmm. um, but not necessarily like heavy back squats, but more like movement movement patterns. Um, 16s will generally start going to gym on a regular basis and have field sessions. So it really depends on where we are. So at 9 to 13, I'd say, we, we, we mainly focus on fundamental movement patterns, you know, strength, strength on the field purely through body weight manipulation, as well as like speed on the field. How do you effectively change direction? You know, you drop the body into the opposite direction, present, you know, pres like straighten yourself towards the opposite direction and then push off through the, the, the leading leg or the opposite leg. You know, those are things you're trying to cue into them. We're not telling them the details. Mm. So at nine to 13, that's probably the most crucial bit because not only are they becoming efficient footballers, but you want them to become good footballers with good movement patterns so that when they become a first team player, for example, mm -hmm. in the gym, they're, they're not worrying about, the, you know, I can't, I can't move in a deadlift because yeah. that shouldn't be their problem. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, well, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to you in, in terms of what you're doing currently and, yeah. and the differences. I'm really keen to learn more about the differences in terms of you spent a year at WASP, which is yeah. a rugby union club, yep. and, and the differences for a pro football club like Crystal Palace. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Reggie, you heard a bit of that in terms of Right. The the this is the reality of of pro sports and Premiership and the elite level elite level isn't it? So on a day to day basis, Sunday league level players are literally <laughs> turning up and playing. There's a massive difference, isn't there? And, and is. I think from from what you see, obviously you've played for for many years, um, whether that yeah. be at a, you know senior level or uh, whether now Sunday league as well. But how prone are your players to injuries? How many injuries do you see you know on a week in week out basis? Um, to be honest with you. Um, Every week, so the players are get injured. But the thing is, because they don't 
do much stretches. They don't do much uh, um, gym or that's why they are not. Um, they're not uh, um, like you know. They don't. They they don't follow instruction. What they're supposed to do to not get injured. Okay. That's why they. We'll come back to you in a sec. We've got our first call of the evening, guys, ladies and gentlemen. If you're watching out in uh, on TV, there is a number at the bottom of the screen. Uh, please do call. If you've got any questions for Nasser, if you've got any questions for Reggie and the other tunis guys, call in. Let's have your questions. Uh, okay, let's take the first one. Uh, Salam welcome to BFA's on the ball show. You're live in the studio. Who am I speaking to? Hello. Uh, can you hear me? Yep, I can. Go for okay, it. Okay, my name is Noman. Noman, hi. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Good. What would you like to? Who first of all? Who would you like to speak to, or would you like to make a comment? I I, I need. I'd like to speak to uh, Nasser. Of course, go for it. He's listening. Okay. Can you hear me, Nasser? Yes, I can hear you. Yep. Uh, Nasser, um, my son is uh, sixteen at the moment. Okay. Okay. And uh, obviously, f as you know, from Asian background, they don't play play uh, a lot of football, uh, which links them into a professional level, but yep. my son has gone from under 11 to under 16 through a few academies. Okay. And right now he's, uh, he's going for a trial at Leeds United in two, three weeks' time. Okay, nice. Uh, you, you specialize in something to do with making an average player to a very uh, a better player? Is that what I hear from you? Um, it's part of what we do. Obviously, like you, you have to understand, some players are generally better. You know, they have talents which are not also found in the gym. It could be that they pick up things extremely fast. It could be that you know their 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 body structure is just made for the sport. So some things are not in our control. But I mean, that, that is our aim. Yeah, we try to make them better players. But so, what would you be offering to the Asian community with talent, with with players? from Asian subcontinent who can break through into the future of these clubs, what can you personally or your team or, uh, I don't know, from your side, what can, what can you offer uh, a player, a young player? Okay. Um, one, of the, one of the biggest things that, I mean, from what I've understood of grassroots football and, and Sunday league football. Right. Um, is, is the idea that, you know, we, we, there's not enough exposure to off the ball work. So yeah, you, you play the game, you may have one training session, but beyond that, like what, what is football seen to be by, 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 young, you know, by young players? And I think one of the things that we need to address or one of the things that we can help him is start starting to understand that football is a game, but beyond the game, what are you doing to improve your game? So is that, is that something as simple as, you know, what, what do you do before your game in terms of, is it an appropriate warm-up routine? Have you actually got your heart rate going in the right way? Have you activated the certain muscle groups that you need to? At the end of a game, have you done the appropriate cool downs? Have you gone home and had chicken or chips, or have you gone home and you know actually had some chocolate milk, which will help in recovery? You know, it's simple things like that. That's just match day. And then on training days, what what are you doing? You know. Um, are you playing because you like it? Are you playing because it's a game that you need to put in for? Or, you know, are you, are you doing anything else? Are you strengthening your hamstrings when you know that they're hurting recently? Um, is there an imbalance between, for example, the quadriceps and the hamstring? So, for example, one is firing up more than, other, more than the other, which could lead onto something like a knee injury. So, you know, we were just speaking off the show about like an ACL injury. So something like an asymmetry in one leg between the other could cause a compensation. So... It can get very technical, but the basic thing is, beyond playing football, what are football players doing? Good question. There you go. Okay. Well, uh, if if the child, obviously, you know, it's it's. Uh, I think it's very difficult for uh, we're look we're looking at a child or a student of age sixteen when he goes to school for eight hours, comes that comes back home and does his homework, then he's got other activities, then he goes out. If there's any training, and then he has to. In England, as you know, the weather is not very great, and the, and they don't do train a lot out there, so they mostly stay indoor. Uh, there's a minimal time of training as well, especially from an Asian background. Yep. It's not easy to compete with, uh, with when you've got eleven play, nine players from one race, and then you have a nation coming through the system. But yep. is there any? Uh, 
um, Asian uh, uh, organizations who can uh, help Asian talent come through the, through you or in the background uh, through through your experience. Um, I'm currently not aware of anything like specific in terms of Asians or you know a, a specific race which which deals with um, like services towards footballers. But what I would say is I understand like for example the the obstacles that you, that your child faces. But one one of the reasons why for example academy players at at an academy are called full time scholars or scholars um, at Premier League level or you know at at, at higher level is because they're being accepted by the team to be trained full time under their wing. So they provided, you know, breakfast, they provided lunch. Um, they sometimes get this thing called day release where they're given permission from school to leave to go to their club training ground. They're picked up by a minibus and brought back. So I, like the, the, the differences at, at pro level or a, a, a level slightly below is that I think you need to kind of measure how much you will put into the game and how much you're trying to invest in terms of what you expect to get out of it. So if he's you know, if he's playing at a Sunday league level, he's playing one, you know, once once a week. Maybe it's something that you want to consider that instead of any other extracurricular activity, sport related, you might want to consider um, looking into you know gym related activities that help towards football. Um, and I'm afraid I don't know of any organisations that help towards strength and conditioning. It's quite a new thing um, in in the sport. But I can definitely say through resources like the internet, you can find things like. Um, you know, sports science is strength and conditioning programs for footballers and then break it down by, you know, starting him at the gym, at his local gym, getting a membership and seeing if he can start off with the basic movement patterns and work his way up. Hope there that helps. Go. Okay, Numan, I don't know if you're still there. You're still there? It says on the ball and the background says about uh, for, for, for talent, for uh, is this something that you will be coming on this program on a regular basis or... Uh, we can contact you. How, how does it work? Yeah, what what I would suggest is if you go on uh, BFA or if better still, if you if you I don't know if you're on social media, contact myself or even Nasser Nasser Uddin. If you contact him on face on Facebook or or Twitter, whatever or LinkedIn, uh, just Google Google him. I'm sure he'll come up. Nasser Uddin, uh, and then I think maybe take it offline. And then if if the, if he can send you in the right direct direct direction, no man, on your child as well. But I think the message, I'm sure we'll get Nasir on again uh, as uh, over the months as well. So uh, it seems to be obviously something that we need to talk more about. But personally, I think maybe contact him on via social media uh, and maybe get his number and have a, a, ch a chat with him offline. But it sounds to me as though there's a lot of work that maybe you uh, need to take your child and individually merely focus on little elements of where you can change small details that are going to make that difference when c compared to what he's doing versus the other kids in the academy. Is that okay? Still there? He's gone. All right, uh, Brother Numa, thank you for your call. Uh, like I said, my advice is contact Nasser via social media. It's Nasser Uddin, U-D-D-I-N, um, and obviously you, you know what he looks like. Um, send him a message and, uh, and go from there. Right, guys, we're out of time for this segment. Um, guys, we'll come back to you guys when we come back. We're going to talk more CFL. In the next segment, we're going to talk about results. We're going to talk about your plans. And I know you've got two very, very big games coming up as well in the next two weeks. So uh, for all you that are watching out there uh, and want more on the CFL results, we're going to be chatting about that in the second half. We've also got Enam here as well. And I think we may have uh, another club here to discuss their results as well. So we'll see you in two minutes.